reaching out. They told us we could not hug, we could not kiss, shake hands, hold hands. At all times, we had to use the air around us as a shield. We could not reach across, so instead, we decided to reach out. We sent our words out over wires. They leaked under walls, through windows, across streets. They leapt through the air, over skies, across oceans. They appeared on screens in little boxes. Our faces appeared on screens too. In little boxes. They appeared and disappeared. We fumbled and stumbled. We were clumsy in those first attempts to reach out. Can you hear me? We bellowed into our screens. Our words collided with each other. Conversational threads were left dangling. Questions went unanswered. No sooner would we pick up another conversational thread? Then the children would snap it, chanting, look at me, look at me. But we could hear each other's voices, alien versions of our voices, compressed by wires with little breaks here and there, but they were still our voices. Messages clogged up our phones. Jokes, memes, videos, 21st century telegrams. A confetti of messages moved across our screens. As soon as one clump was wiped away, another one appeared. These messages at first brought fear. They spread rumours and presented them as fact. We soon learned to turn away from such messages towards messages that brought us comfort and cheer inspirational quotes on a pastel background, videos that showed us soaring vistas, wisdom from the poets and sages, irreverent humour. As the weeks went by, the confetti of messages became a scattering, leaving us free to have beautiful virtual experiences. I discovered a tribe of light-hearted women and went forest bathing with them, by the magic of Zoom. I allowed myself to be guided through the forest by a voice, a soothing voice, and I let myself feel leaves brush my face and listened for the sound of growth. I delivered a ceremony for a family in West Cork. They stood in a circle in the forest I sat on my room by the sea in Waterford. They declared their love with bubbles and sand while I held a ceremony together. Once a week for eight weeks, I watched two boys draw and write on large pieces of paper. They were visited by aliens and invented disgusting recipes. They even created their own newspaper and I listened to my little nephew laugh as I made up stories for him about dinosaurs and dragons wandering around the Phoenix Park and a cat calling round to the president's house for tea. As the weeks went by, the art of reaching out came to me. We no longer shouted, can you hear me at the start of every call? Words no longer collided into each other. I became used to intimacy bundled into little boxes. Faces smiled at me from out of screens, offered me words of comfort. And when I hung up from those calls, I felt I had touched those faces. We still long to hug and hold each other. But until we can, we will continue to embrace each other across wires. We will ask how we are and wait to hear the answer. We will tell each other to stay safe and mean it. And we will let ourselves feel the power of reaching out and let that power narrow the gullies between us.